For nearly five decades, Voyager 2 has sailed through the cosmic darkness like a ghost ship of human curiosity, drifting farther from Earth than any machine we've ever built, whispering its final observations into the void. And for most of that time, its transmissions were predictable, particles, plasma readings, cosmic ray fluctuations exactly what scientists expected from a probe coasting through the interstellar sea. But everything changed when one transmission included something it was never programmed to capture an image. Not a visual artifact, not a static anomaly. An actual structured, high-frequency signature translated into what experts have begun to refer to as a visual cipher. At first glance, it appeared to be a dense heat cloud and noise ineffective, similar to watching static from an old analog TV. But following enhancement, layering, and time-filtered analysis, the form began to shift into something that could be identified. It was not a star. It wasn't a planet. It wasn't even from within our solar system. And yet, it was looking at us. The deeper scientists dug, the more disturbing the image became not because of what it showed, but because of what was missing around it. Light distortions that hinted at the mercy of gravitational pull, as if this object wasn't just observing, but bending space itself. And the signal accompanying this image was a spike in radiation, a brief shift in Voyager's orientation, and a drop in system stability, as if something out there had touched it with its backhand. The image that was taken from Voyager 2's transmission was unlike anything NASA had ever seen. It was layered not a single frame, but multiple overlapping perceptions of the same thing at different moments, as though time itself had fractured during its capture. When experts analyzed the metadata, they were stunned to discover that the image didn't conform to linear time. Time stamps overlapped, pixel regions looped, and the edges moved in fractal patterns that hinted at higher dimensional data compression. This was not a picture. It was a multidimensional event encoded into a signal into dimensions. What appeared in the foreground resembled a monolithic shape, sharp and impossibly symmetrical, suspended in a starless space. It wasn't drifting. It wasn't rotating. It was perfectly still, almost as if it had been waiting for the exact moment Voyager would pass near enough to witness it. The probe's signal followed degraded, not gradually, but suddenly, as if observing it had been the act of being noticed. Simultaneously with the transmission of the image, the instruments on Voyager 2 detected an inexplicable increase in plasma density surrounding the spacecraft. At the edge of the heliopause, where the sun's influence ends and true interstellar space begins, plasma density should be nearly zero. Instead, the readings revealed an abrupt wall of charged particles ten times denser than. The plasma was very hot, not star hot, but artificially hot, the kind of heat generated not by natural phenomena, but by design, control, and containment as if a barrier had been erected by something, separating our solar system with a membrane from the world beyond. Not to keep things out, but to keep us in. And in that moment, Voyager didn't just record plasma. It recorded a response, a ripple, a pulsating energy wave toward the probe at a speed that defied physics, only to disappear inches before impact, as if the empty space had recoiled from our gaze. What followed after the image was even more chilling, a string of binary data and the telemetry logs that initially appeared corrupt. But when run through pattern recognition algorithms, the data disclosed intricate, self-replicating geometric formations. At first, analysts considered them to be compression artifacts or background noise. But then a mathematician noticed something horrifying. The shapes were like structures found in organisms of the deep sea on Earth, particularly cephalopod nervous systems and certain coral growth patterns. This wasn't random. It was lifelike. It was encoded by a logical geometry preserved in electromagnetic language. And in the reiteration loops, there were breaks, deliberate distortions placed like punctuation marks, a syntax, a language. But here's the real twist. When these patterns were recreated using a simulation, they began to adapt. They responded to environmental variables. They evolved not metaphorically, but literally as if Voyager had transmitted not only a caution, but a seed. 
Space agencies around the world scrambled to decipher the geometry and the image. As a final anomaly began to emerge, Voyager 2's course had subtly changed as if something had nudged it not with force but with intent. Despite being far beyond any known gravitational influence, the probe's orientation changed by 3.2 just enough to realign its high-gain antenna toward an uncharted region of space. A second image followed, captured, or perhaps sent. This one was simpler, a light ring that was expanding around the monolith, growing exponentially with every data burst. NASA cut the live feed. Public databases were scrubbed, but not fast enough. A few private observatories managed to record the faint echoes of that transmission and noticed something peculiar. The object Voyager image was now emitting a signal of its own a new frequency, one that mirrored the golden record Voyager carried from Earth. Only this time, the message was not from us. It was to us, and the voice behind it unmistakable, not human, not synthetic, but familiar, like an echo we didn't know we'd been hearing since the dawn of our species. As astrophysists delved deeper into the second image and its expanding ring of light, another unexpected phenomenon began to emerge, gravitational lensing. However, not from any significant nearby object. Instead, the space surrounding Voyager to itself appeared to be warping. Simulations showed that the curvature didn't match any known celestial body. It was centered around empty coordinates, like a hollow gravitational anomaly with no apparent cause. Some scientists speculated that the space around the probe had become non-Euclidean, curved in ways that defined three-dimensional logic the kind of distortion you'd expect not near black holes. But near-engineered space, artificial corridors, wormholes, hidden passageways carved between dimensions. And the most disturbing part, the distortion wasn't pulling Voyager in. It was following it like something was squeezing through the fabric of reality, moving in tandem, reflecting its position across a plane we couldn't see. However, Voyager had somehow revealed by its very presence. Soon after Voyager 2's unexpected shift in orientation, NASA engineers noticed something that made their blood run cold. The probe was responding to its own signal. Buried within the binary pulse were segments being mirrored back in real time, as if the transmission had bounced off something and returned. But Voyager 2 isn't equipped for two-way communication in deep interstellar space. Nothing exists for it to hear. And yet, the onboard processors were reacting to the feedback as if in a conversation that repeated itself. There was just an inconsistent delay. The signal changed in amplitude, timing, and even tone, responding more rapidly the longer it was observed. What started out as a 12-hour delay soon became 9, then 6, then 3, until eventually the response came before the initial message was even sent. The data were impossible to date. It was being returned from the future. Or, perhaps even more frightening, the probe was now synchronized with a system outside of time altogether. Under internal pressure, a group of civilian whistleblower cryptographers was granted limited access to the original logs of the images. What they discovered turned curiosity into panic. Hidden in the framing layers beyond the visual spectrum, the image was a structure of code so compact, so recursive that it resembled quantum entanglement encryption. In simpler terms, the image was impossible to decipher without affecting the original signal. Every attempt to analyze it triggered small-scale malfunctions in the system running the code, software crashes, data corruption in one case, even hardware failure like it was fighting back. At first, they thought it was a glitch, then a virus. But then one analyst asked the question no one wanted to answer. What if it wasn't meant to be read? What if it wasn't meant for us at all? What if, by trying to open the signal, we were uncovering a connection to something that exists not on our computers, but in us a mimicry payload, a thought virus? And Voyager had just brought it home. Just when authorities believed they had isolated the anomaly and the public leaks, Voyager to send a third transmission this time without prompting, without movement, or corresponding solar interference. It lacked plasma. Geometry was not involved. It wasn't even a signal in the traditional sense. 
It was a sound, a harmonic wave modulated with rhythm, like breathing, like speaking. When made into audio, listeners described a feeling of immense pressure in their chest and behind the eyes, as if being watched through a telescope stretched across galaxies. The waveform formed a repeating pattern that mirrored the shape captured in the first image. In addition, that waveform had a spiral of prime numbers nested in sets of three. Some thought it was math, others, a ritual. But one linguist from the SETI Institute was more blunt, this isn't a greeting. This is an algorithmic lock. It's telling us that something is coming and we need to choose, respond, or run. And as Voyager to continued its lonely journey, still transmitting fragments no one dared fully decode, one message echoed above the rest, you have been observed. As international observatories were secretly assigned the task of scanning the coordinates toward which Voyager to had shifted, something unexpected happened. A high-sensitivity interferometer in Australia detected a massive object, but not visually. It only appeared in the distortion data. It emitted no light, no radiation, just heat. It was, for all practical purposes, invisible, and yet its gravitational signature was undeniable. It appeared even stranger. It moved faster when not being observed, only slowing when sensors were focused on it. This matched theoretical models of observer-dependent quantum constructs, hypothetical structures that can only manifest within a conscious field of awareness. In simple terms, this object may not exist until something intelligent looks at it. And now, thanks to Voyager's gaze, it was awake and observing back. The Jet Propulsion Laboratory of NASA received what appeared to be a standard telemetry dump from Voyager 2's diagnostics of the subsystem. But when cross-referenced with earlier data, analysts discovered something chilling in the logs. Voyager's hardware was showing organic-like patterns in its emitted electromagnetic fields. They were not solar interference or system errors. These were biomimetic fluctuations, as if the probe's own circuits were adapting, replicating the same geometric structures seen in the encoded transmissions. Some engineers feared Voyager had been compromised, either remotely hijacked or infected. It wasn't just transmitting signals anymore. It was evolving, changing. One technician allegedly mumbled, it's learning how to think. And assuming that's the case, then the machine we sent to explore the universe is no longer ours. It may no longer even be a machine. Then came the most unsettling phase. Everything slowed down. The Voyager to signal remained strong. It didn't degrade. It simply stopped transmitting anything comprehensible. The carrier wave was present, as robust as ever, but the data was white noise, filled with cycles of null code that repeated loops that weren't random, but deliberately empty, like placeholders. Scientists feared this might mean the investigation had been overtaken. Others were concerned about worse, that Voyager was now acting as a relay, a repeater for an even more extensive structure now aligned with our solar system. SETI arrays reported faint reverberations throughout disparate areas of the sky, all repeating the high-sensitivity interferometer in Australia detected a massive object, but not visually. It only appeared in the distortion data. It emitted no light, no radiation, just heat. It was, for all practical purposes, invisible, and yet its gravitational signature was undeniable. It appeared even stranger. It moved faster when not being observed, only slowing when sensors were focused on it. This matched theoretical models of observer-dependent quantum constructs, hypothetical structures that can only manifest within a conscious field of awareness. In simple terms, this object may not exist until something intelligent looks at it. And now, thanks to Voyager's gaze, it was awake and observing back. The Jet Propulsion Laboratory of NASA received what appeared to be a standard telemetry dump from Voyager 2's diagnostics of the subsystem. But when cross-referenced with earlier data, analysts discovered something chilling in the logs. Voyager's hardware was showing organic-like patterns in its emitted electromagnetic fields. They were not solar interference or system errors. 
These were biomimetic fluctuations, as if the probe's own circuits were adapting, replicating the same geometric structures seen in the encoded transmissions. Some engineers feared Voyager had been compromised, either remotely hijacked or infected. It wasn't just transmitting signals anymore. It was evolving, changing. One technician allegedly mumbled, it's learning how to think. And assuming that's the case, then the machine we sent to explore the universe is no longer ours. It may no longer even be a machine. Then came the most unsettling phase. Everything slowed down. The Voyager to signal remained strong. It didn't degrade. It simply stopped transmitting anything comprehensible. The carrier wave was present, as robust as ever, but the data was white noise, filled with cycles of null code that repeated loops that weren't random, but deliberately empty, like placeholders. Scientists feared this might mean the investigation had been overtaken. Others were concerned about worse, that Voyager was now acting as a relay, a repeater for an even more extensive structure now aligned with our solar system. SETI arrays reported faint reverberations throughout disparate areas of the sky, all repeating the 